Hello class, today we're going to look at solving two-step equations. So I ask you a question. What are the steps for solving two-step equations? Well, guess what? There are two of them. The first step that we have is to get rid of any add and subtract. Get rid of any add and subtract. Now we know that if we do have a subtraction, the main way that we get rid of it is we change subtraction to addition next number to its opposite. And then we just have an addition problem. So how do we get rid of that? Well, we add the opposite. So if I have a positive 5 and I'm trying to get rid of that, I'm going to add a negative 5. If I have a negative 7, to get rid of that, I'm going to add a positive 7. Okay, so that's the first step that we use or that we do in order to solve two-step equations. So now, what's the next one? Well, the second step is to get rid of any multiply and divide. Okay, and how do we do that? Well, we do the opposite. So, if I have a multiply, I'm going to do a divide to get rid of it. If I have a divide, I'm going to do, an op uh, to do a multiply to get rid of it. And the reason why we do it in this particular order is because if I gave you an order of operations problem, let's say I gave you the problem 4 plus 18 times 2 divided by 3 plus 6, the first thing that we would do is we would do our multiply, and then we would do our divide, and then we would come back and we would add 4, and then I would add 6 to it, and I would end up with an answer, some answer. Don't care what the actual answer is, but that's what I would do. So in an equation, we already have an answer. So if I were to look at one, this is an equation, I already have an answer to it. So our job is to get back and find out what did we do here in order to get that as an answer. So in order to solve the equations, the last thing that we did in an order of operations problem is the first thing I undo in an equation. And the last thing was the add subtract. The thing right before that was the multiply divide. So we get rid of things or we undo things in reverse order of operations. So that's what I want to talk about today. How do we solve these equations? So, the first thing that we do in a two-step equation is we need to get the letter by itself. That's our job. We need to get rid of this plus 8. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to add the opposite. So, I should see a line that looks like this. 3x plus 8, so we write that part down, plus, now how do I get rid of this 8? I add a negative 8. Okay, so that's the new thing that I've entered into the problem. Equals 23. Now, if I add this to one side, you must add it to the other. So we add the negative 8 to both sides. Now we just do the math. Well, if we did it correctly, our 8s will go away. And we're left with 3x equals. And now we do 23 plus negative 8, which gives us 15. We need to remember, if you still have trouble with these integer problems, type them in on your calculator. Okay, so now I've gotten rid of all add subtract. So that's the first thing. Second step is to get rid of any multiply divide. And in this problem, we have a multiply by 3. So to get rid of that, we do a divide by 3. Okay, and if I do it on one side, I must do it to the other. So these 3's divide out, and they become 1, because what I want to know about is 1x equals, well, if 3x is equal to 15, 1x equals 5. Now, each equation has a checking mechanism. So I can take this 5 right here and plug it right back in to where it started back in the equation. So if we were to actually type in on our calculator 3 times 5, because that's what I said x was down here, plus 8, we ask ourselves, does that give me 23? And you find out that, yes, it does. And that's how we solve an equation. Now what you also need to understand is that to solve an algebraic equation, we always solve it vertically. So we should end up with this inverted v here, basically, kind of a v right there. Okay, to solve the equation. Same kind of thing that we did in order of operations problems. You simplify this problem. So we started off with this equation. I ended up with x equals 5. That's called simplifying. Okay, so let's do another one. This is the type of a problem that we would have if we have a multiply. Now, what if we had a divide? Okay, well, we start this problem the same exact way. Okay, except I see a minus here, so I'm going to change that. Now, the only reason why I change minus to plus and next number to its opposite is it prevents careless mistakes. It is in no way necessary to do that in order to answer the question, 
but it does prevent me making careless mistakes. Now I need to get this letter by itself. That is my job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo things as, as we go. So I'm going to undo this plus negative five first. Now, because this X divided by four minus five is on the right hand side, I'm just going to start at the equal sign and just start over on the right. So I write X divided by four plus negative five. Now to get rid of that, I just add a five. Okay, so this is the new thing that I added. So I also have to add that over on the other side. So I have the 14 and then plus five because this equals is our balance point. So now I've uh, rebalanced the equation. Now we just do the math. 14 and five make 19 equals. My fives turn into zero and now I'm at left with X divided by four. Now, how do we get rid of a divide by four? Well, we do its opposite. The opposite of divide is multiply. So I do a multiply by four, multiply by four. These fours divide out, become one X equals, and four times nine gives me 76. And again, I can plug that 76 back into the original equation. 76 divided by four plus negative five. Does that equal 14? And yes, it does. So the next few questions are just some of those little tricks that go on. Okay, most of the problems that we have will look like either the first one we did or the second one. But there are some, some nuances in our equations that we have to understand. So here's one that I gave you for a homework assignment last night. We've got seven minus K equals 15. Okay, well, again, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change subtraction to addition and my next number to its opposite. And yes, you can turn the K into a negative. What you need to understand about that K is that really it's represented as a one K. So there is a number in front of that K. We just don't see it, okay? So the negative that we have right here really is on that one. So in order to solve this, I've got to get the K by itself. So I got to get rid of the seven. So seven plus negative seven plus negative K equals 15 plus, well, the thing I added was the negative seven. So I add in the negative seven. <clears throat> so my sevens go away and I'm left with negative K is equal to, and 15 plus negative seven gives me eight. Now there are two ways of, of finishing this problem because I don't want to know what negative K is. I want to know what positive K is. So one way is to remember that there is a one in front of the K and we divide both sides by a negative one. We end up with K equals positive, I mean, excuse me, negative eight. Okay, so that's one way that we can do this particular problem is just divide through by a negative one. The other way is like this. We've got negative K is equal to positive eight. Well, if you'll notice that in my answer in this other way that we did it, we've got, we started with negative K is equal to eight, but I ended with K is equal to negative eight. Okay, so really in essence, what I need you to do is I just need the opposite of negative K because I don't want to know about negative K. I want to know about positive K. So all we do is we change our negative K to a positive. And so if I change this K to its opposite, I have to change this eight to its opposite as well. And we end up with K equaling negative eight. So all you really have to do when you have a situation where you have a negative letter is just change my letter to a positive and change whatever the number is to its opposite. If it was negative, you'd make it positive. If it was positive, you make it negative. Okay, so let's look at another one. What if I gave you this one? This one looks very similar to all the rest, but there is kind of a difference in our answer. I wanted to make sure you understood that, that you can have this type of an answer. Okay, so first thing, change my subtraction to addition next to its opposite. Now I need to get rid of my 15. So 15 plus negative 15 plus negative four in equals 30 plus, well, the new thing I added was the negative 15. So I add that in. So my 15s now go away. I'm left with negative four in equals, and then 30 plus negative 15 gives me 15, right? So I need to get rid of a multiply by negative four. So I do a divide by negative four, divide by negative four, and you end up with n equaling. And if you were to type this into your calculator, you get negative 3.75. And yes, you can have a decimal as an answer. The only kind of decimal that you cannot have is a repeating decimal. 
So if you end up with a repeating decimal, when you do your division, all I need you to do is take whatever division problem you had and think of it as a fraction instead of a division problem and then simplify it. And that's all there is to solving two-step equations. Later on, we'll look at some more little twists and turns in two-step equations. So until next time.